Welcome to Big Dan's Airgun Review Channel. This one's ever so slightly different compared to most of the reviews that we do, as this is our first ever sponsored video. Uh, the sponsorship comes from a company known as Regale, which are the importers for airgun brands such as Zabroya, AGT, and lo like what we can see in front of us, Norica. Now I'm quite glad about this because I was really interested to test a Norica rifle on this channel as they don't have that much of a following in the UK yet but if you look abroad in places like America the market for them is actually pretty huge and they seem to get fairly uh, favourable reviews. So I had a chat to them over the phone and they said yes we're more than happy to send you a Norica which I thought fantastic so I've had a look at their website and I'm very 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 impressed by the looks of the Storm and the Dragon Claw gas ram. Now they know, well, by watch, if they've watched my videos, they'll know I tend to prefer more traditional styled stocks. I don't mind synthetic, but tactical stocks never quite do it for me. And they've had the bravery to send me the Deadeye, <laughs> which is about as tactical as it gets. If you looked at this from a distance, you'd think it was a 50 caliber Barrett or something like that, or some sort of military rifle. It's even got a, a sort of a part in the stock there, which is meant to be like a, a, a magazine. So like I said, they're very, very brave, but to give them credit, they said to me, no, be as honest as absolutely possible, as what you can be. And it's kind of rare that you'd probably get this sort of thing from a sponsor. Um, I was expecting them to be, oh no, say it's, it's this and that and all this sort of thing. And But no, they told me do the review as I usually do, which I've got massive respect for them for. But they also do uh, archery related products and pellets and such. Uh, if you're interested or if you like any more information, get in touch with them. They're a lovely bunch of uh, guys and girls. Uh, get in touch, as mentioned, regale.co.uk. They're a wonderful bunch. And if you have any questions or you like anything, I'm sure they'll uh, have a chat and see what they can do for you. Anyways, let's on, get on with the review with our Norica Deadeye GRS. Let's see what it can do. Let's move on to features of the rifle. Starting at the rear of the rifle, we've got a rubber recoil pad. And we've also got an adjustable cheek piece. We'll move more onto that in the handling section of the review, but always a nice thing to have. This is where things get interesting though, and what I was quite looking forward to testing. Starting at the trigger, the Deadeye GRS uses Norica's premium trigger, the NATS trigger, Norica Adjustable Trigger System. And it'll be interesting to see just how that feels compared to most other sort of uh, medium budget sort of um, brake barrel rifles on the market see how that compares to it and again it is an adjustable unit so um, that would be very interesting to move on to in the handling section. Further along we've got the action here, you've got a standard dovetail rail and you've also got an anti-creep mount there which is always a nice little feature. They're a little bit ugly if I'm honest but they do their job so you can't complain. It is also removable which is nice. Um, we've also got this rifle is uses a gas ram system, it's not a traditional spring uh, powered rifle. Gas rams usually they can kick a bit, which is why some people don't like them. Again, we'll move more into this into the handling section. But a unique feature of this one is that it uses Norica's RAS system or recoil absorption system. So we'll see just how that feels compared to the rifles such as like um, I shot a BSA Lightning the other day. We'll see how it fares compared compared to that. See how that feels. And also we get quite a lot of the XS19 GR gas rams in. See how it compares to that. But no, it'd be interesting to see if that actually has any effect or not. Um, we've then got the Stock. <laughs> Sorry, Regal. I told you I was going to be cruel when I had to be. I'm not a great lover of the stock. Everyone's got their own uh, point of view on these things. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Um, in my opinion, as some of you may know if you watch my videos, I prefer a more traditionally styled stock. I don't mind synthetic, as long as it's like a normal sort of stock, or like a thumb hole. My 97 is a thumb hole stock, and I love it, and that's synthetic. But I'm not a huge lover of the military look. I said the exact same thing in the Milbro Target Master review. It, it was, the, the Target Master was a nicely built rifle, but the stock wasn't really my thing. Um, it's the same thing here. Uh, I'm not a big lover of the way that the magazine has been <laughs> cut out there, like it's some sort of, like I said, 50 caliber anti-material rifle or something. But again, got to be honest, there are people that will love this. And to give it credit, the pattern on it is really nice. And it's actually quite a nice feeling stock. Um, it's more softer feeling stock than some of the cheaper synthetics you see on the market. They've got like a hard sort of scratchy feel to them. It's, it's nicely finished if I'm being honest. And I like the way that they've, I don't know if you can see that, there's the Norica logo in there and you can see with the O like they usually do. Like in their um, actual logo you'll see online what they advertise with. It's cut out and there's like a slab of metal has been put in there for the, uh, the O which is quite a nice little bit of attention to detail. I can respect that. But anyways, moving on from the stock. 
We've got a uh, weaver type rail on the side here. There's one on each side for an attachment of to that you can attach, sorry, accessories and things like that, which is always handy. So you can have a torch on one side, maybe a laser if that's what you like using on the other side, or you name it. It's it's nice to have it attached to the rifle straight out of the box. Um, I believe some of these actually come with bipods, um, but Regal didn't supply me with the bipod version because, well, we saw what happened with the Milbro review. But spring or gas ram rifles don't really work with bipods very well, and to be fair with you, well, we don't know how it shoots just yet. It might not even need anything like that. So again, we'll move more into that in the handling section, but it's nice to have those rails there. Moving further along, the barrel is shrouded, uh, which gives it quite a nice sort of chunky appeal without being overboard. Um, it's, a, it's a similar sort of... The rifle's designed a very similar sort of way as the Remington Thunder Scepter, but if anything, I actually slightly prefer this shroud on this because it's not quite so in-your-face as the Thunder Scepter is. It's a bit more streamlined, if that's the way I can put it. Uh, we've also got on the end there, you can see you've got fibre optic sights, you've got front and rear mounted sights. Uh, the rear sights, this is, it's a nice slab, but it is plastic on the rear here, and you can see the fibre optic insert there, and you've got the end sight there, you can see just glowing up. But yeah, that's features out the way. Overall, it's, uh, it's an interesting rifle, we'll put it that way. But um, let's move on to handling now, and see just what this plastic fantastic actually feels like when put to the shoulder. So then, handling. What's the dead eye like when it's put to the shoulder? Well, the most surprising thing that you might find with this is that for this type of rifle, this is incredibly light, really light. I mean, the Target Master, like I said, was a bit of a heifer. Not a bad gun, but a bit of a heifer. Um, and things like the Remington Thunder Scepter, although I haven't reviewed it yet, I can pretty much, I can guarantee you, it's, it's a lot heavier than this. This, to be honest with you, what it's probably more geared for is obviously teenagers and things like that. People are still into their shooting games and the, the like. Um, but yeah, it's really light, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's, it's well balanced as well. The balance point's pretty much exactly where my hand is now. Um, it's a well-made gun, if I'm being honest. It does feel quality when you, you're holding it and you put it to your shoulder. The only thing I don't really like the feel of, um, again, Regal, I warned you I was going to be like this, is the cheek piece. Although it's handy having an adjustable cheek piece, it's, well, a little bit cheap feeling. It's, it's just a, a thin, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little thin slab of plastic, and it is adjustable, you simply undo these screws, which I'm currently fighting with at the minute, but I assure you that's more me having an issue, not the gun. Undo these screws, and pull it out, like so. But you can see it's a little bit janky, it's, it's not as smooth as other guns. I did like the Milbro, the way you just put the screwdriver in, tightened it up, and... Uh, or move the screwdriver, or you add, uh, sorry, a wheel in the in the mill bro. It's a thunder scepter you use the screwdriver with, loosen some screws and pull it up. It's not bad. I mean, it's nice that it's got it, but I'm not a huge lover of it. And to be fair, I know everybody's head shape is different, but to be honest, in the standard configuration, it's pretty much spot on. Like a, a scope with standard mounts, two-piece mounts, like what you can see here. It's pretty much spot on as it was. But how does it feel like to shoot? Well, let's have a go. Let's load a pellet in. First thing you'll notice is unlike a lot of guns on the on the uh, market today, it's so easy to cock you don't need to tap it or anything like that. I mean, I just did that just yanking it down and there weren't a whole lot of effort involved. So again, it could make, to be fair, the perfect teenager sort of rifle. It's very easy to get along with at the moment. And then close her up like so. Let's see what happens. You've also got the automatic safety and this is my ideal automatic safety setup as well because it's nice, it's easy to get to. You don't, unlike the XS38, you don't have to pull it towards you to get it to fire. You actually flick away from the trigger, which is nice and safe. If you want to re-engage it, just tap it back on. It's nice and light, tap it back like that, and she won't go. But yeah, I really like this automatic safety design. This is pretty much the ideal system. If I could have this on my HW97, I'd have it done in a heartbeat. But let's see how it shoots and see what the trigger's like. This is the thing that we're probably gonna be most interested in, to be honest, so let's see. Gas rams tend to kick quite a lot, let's feel what that trigger's like. Well, first off, the first stage is nice and light, and this hasn't been fettled with or anything, this is completely out of the box. And I can feel, you might be able to see that there, my trigger finger stopping there, I can feel the second stage coming in. So let's give it a squeeze. That's pretty good. That's really good, that trigger. It's, it's nice, you can feel the first stage is nice and long, but the second stage is quite pronounced. You'll feel when you're there and the gun's ready to go. It doesn't take that much effort to actually get it to, to fire off as well. I'm going to have another go at that. 
<laughs> I'm going to give it another go, because that was quite enjoyable. Let's, let's... If you can see, if I get my hand out of the way a bit more for you there, so you can actually see what it's like. So there you go, if you can see that, give it a little bit of a squeeze, and then off it goes. That's a good trigger, a really good trigger. Well chuffed with that, especially for a rifle at this price point, around the £200 mark, usually I think max SLP for these. That's pretty damn good. Um, the shot cycle for a gas ram, it's it might be a little bit softer than your normal gas ram. So let's give it another go because I was focusing mainly on the trigger. It's look, say what you want about it, about the stock, and I've said it myself, and it is true. I'm still not a lover of the stock. I don't like that magazine there. It's a bit. It's not my cup of tea. People will eat it up. Certain people they'll adore that, but it's not my thing. But oh, safety! He catches me out. It's not bad. The recoil on this is it's it's a bit softer than most gas rams. That the BSA Lightning I shot the other day. That was I didn't mind it if I'm honest, but it was a lot more jarring than this seems to be. With this, you might be able to see it's it's a soft up and down motion. Some guns for me tend to go a little bit horizontal every now and again, but this it's just a little nudge up and down. So I'll be really interested to take it onto the accuracy section, see what it can do at a 25 yard mark. But overall handling wise, yeah, trigger's superb. I love the um, the automatic safety on it. The stock's not really me, and the uh, adjustable cheek piece. Although some people will love this, and it is a nice feature to have, it's not the best on the market at the minute. But you can easily you can live with it. It's not something that's an, a nuisance. I put it that way. It's just not quite as chunky maybe as I'd have liked it to have been. Um, so yeah, now we better move on, I suppose, to um, the accuracy test thing most people love. So let's move on to accuracy and see what we can do at our 25 yard mark. Let's move on. So then, here we are at the range. Things are ever so slightly different compared to other videos because we've actually had to move back a bit. As uh, you can see, people have been soaring up my backstop a little bit. Um, but anyways, we've took it back and we've gone to 27 yards now instead of the 25. Um, so a little bit longer range, but I'm sure we should be okay. I do have to confess though, this is the second day um, of filming because the first day we was filming, you may notice, um, like it might be a little bit brighter now, I'm not sure, but for one, it got freezing cold and two, it got so windy, I could not get the rifle to group pretty much whatsoever. You can see it's still gusty now. I might have to fold the, uh, the top of the target back just a little bit just so it gives it a little bit more stability on the, the nail on there that we hold it in with. You know, very high-tech stuff here at Big Dan's Air Guns. Um, but yeah, we're at 27 yards now. Um, still a little bit gusty, but again, we'll see what we can do. You can see we're gonna be sitting over there. There's the, there it is, just the table back there. Um, and we're gonna be, pardon me, that was my phone. Uh, we'll be sitting, shooting, unrested, 27 yards. We'll put a five shot group through. I put, I've got a few different tins of pellets with me. I'll put through, see which ones it likes the most and uh, see what the Norica can do. So then, let's move on to accuracy test. Accuracy test results. How did the Norica Dead Eye do? Pretty damn well, if I'm honest. Uh, I will just have to say, you may have noticed I put a little bit more than five shots uh, into the target card. It's been kind of machine gunned in the middle there, if I'm being honest. If I'm being brutally honest, I don't know how many shots I put through it. Um, you can have a look through the video and count them yourself if you want. Uh, to be fair, I can't really come up with any excuses why I decided to put more through. I suppose one hand. If we're being honest, we're all air gunners here. We know a bit of target shooting is pretty damn good fun. Um, and two, I just wanted to see what the rifle could do, to be honest with you, see if we had any flyers. Um, the other thing that proved interesting, like I said, I was shooting this, um, this is the second day uh, filming this review, actually filming. 
and I've had a little play with it in and out. This rifle has been shot in a bit more than a lot of the other rifles we tend to review on this um, this channel, but it, it's another gun that really seems to like the SMK Heavy Shock Victory Pellets. Again, this could be because this is a Spanish-made gun and it's designed for maybe more higher power levels and such, or the twist rate on the barrels may be adapted more for that. Um, but I put some super domes through it and it shotgunned all over the place. I put some JSBs through it and it shotgunned all over the place. Um, I would have loved to have tried some of the Barracudas from HN or the Remington Barracudas through there, but I didn't actually have any on hand, unfortunately. These were the closest things I had um, on me, and I thought, you know what, they did pretty well in our B2 review, why not give them a go? And, well, you can't really complain about that, really. Um, I do have some coins with me. It's not a five pence group, to be fair. Not quite, anyway. I'll just try to line that up there. It's almost five pence. Now, you can see we've got a little one just poking through up here. Let's try, let's try, no, see a penny down there if a penny will cover it up, it's more realistically it's a penny group, yeah, 27, sorry, no he said 25 then, I have it, at 27 yards it per pretty much perfectly fits under a 1p piece, you just got a little like a uh, little ear poking up here, but that's about it, but overall it's, it's, to be honest, I'm really impressed. Like I said, I know they have got Norica's um, recoil absorption system built in here, which to be honest, going into this, the same as what probably a lot of people thought um, when I first mentioned it in the review, like, what the hell is that? I doubt it works. I mean, although that is in there, and like I said, it is. it might be slightly softer recoiling compared to most gas rams out there, it is still an incredibly lightweight rifle. Again, like I said, despite how it looks, it's there's not a whole lot of weight there. Um, so it did, it flicked up more than like your traditional spring gun would. For a gas ram, it's still pretty good. So maybe that thing is doing something. It doesn't recoil any more than, say, a heavier gas ram does. But there still is a bit of flick there, like I say, vertical flick. But I'm actually, I'm really impressed with that. I thought I'd carry on with it just to see exactly what it could do with a few more shots. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Only thing we will take away from that, like I said, is it doesn't like traditional pellets like we're used to over here. Um, putting through our guns like the air arms and the JSB jumbos and things like that. It wasn't a huge fan of them, so we can label the gun, the barrel as pellet fussy perhaps. But that said, you can't really complain about that accuracy to be fair with you. And you saw earlier in the, um, when I was showing you the range, it's not the stillest of days out there today. That's pretty good. So then, that leads us on to the final verdict. So then, Norica Deadeye final verdict. What do we like? What don't we like? Who will it suit? Well, first things first, it is a nice lightweight gun. So, if you're looking for a gun, maybe you've got uh, kids who like the tactical look, like playing the computer games and what they've seen in films and want to get into target shooting or anything like that, this rifle is, it will fit the bill perfectly. It's nice and light, it's, well, especially even considering how it looks and even compared against traditional brake barrels, it is a very, very light rifle. Um, and as well as that, like I showed you, it is extremely easy to cock. You don't even, a lot of guns these days, brake barrels, you have to give them a little tap to release the, um, the barrel, whereas this one, it's just like, like some of the brake barrels you shoot that are, say, in the past sort of thing, you just grab the barrel, pull it down, and that's it, job done. Other things that are really good is the trigger on it, that Nat's trigger, is really, really nice, if I'm being honest. I'm so glad that Regal actually sent us a rifle, uh, a Norica anyway, with this trigger unit on, because this is the one I've been wanting to test for a hell of a long time. Um, and I am very, very... Uh, surprised by it actually I thought it was going to be a bit mediocre but it is a really nice trigger first stage there's a little bit of um, distance on the first stage maybe but uh, again you could probably adjust that out it is an adjustable unit on there uh, but the second stage it's not stiff which is where a lot of the um, the budget guns tend to fall over a little bit is that the second stage is long and heavy and stiff and it if anything pulls you off target more than maybe just a nice little single stage would but this has got a nice, a fairly light single stage, but it's pronounced. You can feel when that second stage, it's engaging, which is really good. And it helps you to be just a little bit more consistent with your shots. It's a very, it's a very predictable little trigger. The automatic safety is also, as you guys know, I get a bit too overexcited about these things maybe, but the automatic safety is brilliant. This is my favorite designed automatic safety. This tied with the hat sand safety um, unit where it's got the toggle on the back of the action up there on the hat sand. But this is perfect. Uh, it's easy to disengage, easy to re-engage again, and the fact that you can do that compared to a lot of automatic safeties on the market is a great idea. Um, 
the only thing I will say though, during testing, like I said, I've had this for a little bit longer than a lot of my reviews, uh, mainly due to weather and such like that, and the fact that the um, the farm has actually been used as a farm instead of my range, which I know is cheeky, but uh, you got to let them do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you don't cock that barrel all the way back sometimes the automatic safety won't engage you've got to make sure that you bring the barrel all the way back until you hear the click for that safety to engage otherwise without knowing it you can return that barrel and your gun's ready to fire which obviously you don't may not want to happen you ideally you'll want that safety to engage each and every time but again as long as you make sure that barrel's pulled all the way back in that safety will engage um, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's, it is a nice rifle, to be fair. There are a nice amount of positives for it. It's also, look at the accuracy down here. Let me get our penny back. You can see it's pretty much the exact same size group as the penny coin. And again, you guys, I'm sure, counted the amount of shots I put through there. I've completely forgotten. I was meant to do five, but I got a little bit carried away, like I have done every now and again. I might even say from now on, um, not even going to count how many shots I put in. I'm just going to say, look, I'm just going to have a few shots at the target and see what happens. Um, but yeah, you can see it's it's an accurate rifle um, when you know what you're doing with it. Again, I have shot this already. We did try filming this the other day, but it was really windy and the shots were all over the place. But yeah, to be honest with you, it's, it is an accurate gun. The trigger does its job, it is lovely to use. And the other advantage is, although, I go on to the looks in a minute, but uh, although that magazine, I don't really like that sort of thing, you can use it a bit as a ha like a hamster, like a lot of the target guns. Your leading hand will fit underneath the, the mag here, leaving the rest of the gun pretty much to float free. And it does do its thing. It definitely does its thing for accuracy. So now let's move on to things that I'm not a lover of. Um, with the Norica Deadeye. Main thing that I know you're waiting for is the stock. Uh, I've got to be honest, Rigel, I do love the fact you sent me this rifle, but uh, I did say to you over the phone, I'm not really going to hold back, and I do not like that stock. Um, the only real positive is that you can use that magazine to rest your hands on. It is well made as well, I will give it that. It is a nice feeling stock, and I like the little bits of attention to detail they put in there, like with the O with the Norica symbol there. It's like, um, I don't know if it is really metal or just plastic, it's like a metallic look to it and it does look really nice uh, other than that though don't really like the stock this isn't my style this isn't necessarily anything particularly against this rifle but I'm not really into the tactical thing um, this is a little bit overboard for me the adjustable cheek piece is a nice thing to have personally for me with this um, 3 to number 40 scope we've got on top here this um, pro shot scope uh, also provided by Regal thank you very much for that um, it's pretty much as high as I'd want it Again, I've got a big head. You've all seen it before, unfortunately. I do apologise about that. Um, I do have a slightly big head, and in its lowest setting, it's pretty much perfect for me. Any higher than that, and it's it's too high. Uh, I also don't particularly like the feel of it, from being honest. But again, it swings and roundabouts, because people look at that, and they other people out there will probably fall in love with it. It's the same with the, the looks of the rifle in general, really. They might look at that and go, well, yeah, that's, that's my cup of tea. Um, which leads me into the, uh, the bit where I say, who would like this particular rifle? Well, teenagers and such getting into the sport, it will be absolutely perfect for them. For one, it's got the more radical looks that many teens out there seem to like, and you've also got a lot of them do like tinkering and such as well, and, and throwing accessories on there. And as standard, you have got them sort of weaver style tactical mounts on either side of the guns. So you can fit a torch, laser, bipod, you name it on there, um, and you're you're all set. You're ready to go. No screws needed, bolting in or anything like that. It's out the box. It's ready for it. Um, it's also, again, it's nice and light. They'll like it for that. It's You could use it as a hunter, to be fair. Just make sure you do some practice with it first, because like I said earlier, it was a little bit pellet fussy, if I'm honest. Um, it's not completely run in. It's had about 350 pellets through it. Um, usually it takes a tin or two tins to fully run in, in my experience. But again, it has got the accuracy there. And that was 27 yards shooting I was just doing then. Um, and it was grouping pretty well. Like I say, there's a, a penny group there. You could, I'd say realistically, you could hunt with it. Not sure if I'd take it at the minute beyond the 27 yard mark, but again, for a gas ram or spring gun, 27 yards isn't a bad range to hunt with. Bear in mind, we are in the UK, we're limited to 12 feet pounds when it comes to power. Um, although I don't have the results on me at the moment as well, uh, this was chronographed at 11 foot pound um, using, that was RWS Super Dimes though, which again, which I've already mentioned, didn't group very well, but. Uh, with these, it's doing, it's nudging 10 foot pound with the Victory Heavy Shocks. But again, you've got to bear in mind these are 20.5 grain pellets, so they're they're getting up there. Um, so again, if you find like a more regular weighted pellet, you'll be say touching 11 or say 10.8. But again, it's still got a way to work itself in. 
Target shooters, again, you saw the accuracy there. It's, it's pretty good for that. It's nice and light. It's easy to use. You wouldn't get tired of cocking it. Again, it's very, very, possibly one of the easiest rifles to break the barrel on I think I've ever shot. Um, but now we've got to go into people who I don't think it will really suit. And that is people like me that do not like these sort of looks. If you don't like tactical looking guns anyway, this isn't really going to change your mind. I've got to be honest. It shoots nice. It's quiet because it's a gas ram. There's no twang. It's more, you know, like gas rams. It's a clop and off it goes. And again, for such a light gun, it doesn't recall nowhere near as bad as what you think it would. Again, could be that RAS system in there. Uh, who knows? But it, it, sh it does shoot pretty smoothly considering how light it is. It doesn't really jump at all. I've had spring guns that kick more than this thing. Um, but again, if you don't like the tactical look, this isn't going to change your mind. Um, and maybe if you're after a, a serious 60 yard hunting tool, it's also probably not going to be what you're after. But then again, that's a little bit unfair. We're looking at a gun here that's say 200, I think max RRP is 240 quid. So it's not really going to be um, going to, well, you shouldn't expect it from it sort of thing. But again, it is capable of pretty good accuracy like you can see down there. But overall, I've just got to say, thanks for watching this review. Um, I hope this has uh, helped shine some light on Norica. And uh, I'm also honoured, and I've got to thank Regal ever so much for sending me this rifle. Um, I'm also, like I said, I'm honoured that uh, I'm, I think, one of the first, as far as I'm aware, to do a video on a Norica. Um, which, again, they're pretty huge in America. I'm, I'm just grateful that they've sent me one of these so I can sample it myself and see what I think of it. i tell you what you guys at Regal have done, though. You've made me really want to try the, I believe it's the, the Norica Dragon GRS gas ram rifle, which is a more um, traditional style synthetic stock. I really want to try that. And the other one that I am dying to try, because I think it's a stonking rifle. Uh, if you haven't heard of it before, people watching this, Google the Norica Storm. That is a beautiful looking thing. And uh, yeah, Regal, <coughs> if you want to send me uh, either one of those to review, I would be more than happy to film it and get it done for you. Right then, just a little bonus video here. It's no Big Dan's air gun review if we don't kill some coins. So what I've done, I've got us four little uh, suspects down here lined up and we're gonna do the three pellet test like we do all the time. We've got it set up now at 25 yards because again our 27 yards mark is a bit rough. We've got it 25 yards here. We're gonna have three shots per coin and we're gonna see if we can work our way from the two pence to the 10 pence to the penny the five pence piece and let's see how the Norica Deadeye can do. We're going to compare it now directly to the XS38 which I believe if memory serves correctly I think it hit every single coin. Uh, oh no we, we classed it as a miss for the two pence didn't we because we couldn't find it again. Anyways let's see what the Norica Deadeye can do at 25 yards against four coins. This be a good bit of fun. Well, so far we've had one miss on the 10 pence piece, that's the one, and so far I think that's blatantly a miss. I just think it is. Yeah, that's a miss on the 5p piece as well. So, we've got one life left. Can we get the 5p with our final shot? Let's have a look. Come on, Norica. Right, well they're all gone, that's one thing, uh, but can we find any of them? That's the other question. Um, they all flew off pretty well, but ah, <laughs> probably should have seen that quicker to be honest, but I'm looking through the camera more than uh, using my own eyes to be fair with you. Right, five pence piece, did we make any impact on this? To be fair, like I said with these pellets it's doing around nine foot pound, around just under 500 feet per second, so maybe it wouldn't, but you know what the rules are when we do this last time. If there's no mark, which I'm sure or maybe even at that speed there should be one, we've got to call it a miss. So the five pence piece, oh, what a load of poo. I was, I, I was so happy when I thought I hit that. Well, guess not then. Oh, it was fun anyway. But right, that's that one done. Let's try and find the uh, two pence piece, the penny and the 10 pence now. 
the only issue is they're the same colour roughly as this wood so I don't think it's probably going to happen we'll have a little sniff around here but I'm not seeing anything it's probably right in front of me and I can't see it you guys probably already seen it ten times over in the camera but I'm not seeing a damn thing well, that's disappointing well we found one coin that wasn't hit as far as I'm aware it wasn't hit there's no notable mark on it anything like that so we've got to call that a miss and if you've seen our other reviews where we blast coins you know what the rules are if we can't find the coin we have to call it a miss I mean technically then we missed all four <laughs> I'm sure we didn't but we apparently missed all four. We saw them fly off. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You guys can be the judge, jury, and executioner. Watch the video. If you think that they look like they was hit, we'll call them hits. It's, it's entirely down to you. Like I say, by our rules, we'll call it miss. Call all four of them a miss. But it was fun at the end of the day. That's all it comes down to. As long as you guys are happy with it, that's it. But I'll leave it to your, you guys' expert judgment. Let me know what you think. Do you reckon we had uh, three hits, one miss? Or do you reckon all four was misses? Anyways, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned, and um, thank you ever so much, Regal, for providing us the rifle and allowing me to, well, give my honest thoughts about it. I'll put it that way. Thanks a lot, everyone, and we'll see you next time.